Hey guys, welcome back to Tabletop Glory, and today we're going to be talking about how I paint the box art for Death Guard. Now, I don't follow the heavy metal style exactly, and you could go a little bit brighter on the highlights than what I do here, but it's a quick and easy way to do it and to knock out an entire army. So let's crack in with the tutorial right away. In my personal opinion, one of the best ways to play tribute to the box art if you're not planning to follow the exact heavy metal style is to at the very least use the same if not very similar base coat. So in my case we're going to be using Death World Forest, we're going to use this to base everything. We're going to end up adding just a little bit of moot green to use as my highlights and we're going to spray that directly from above and that's going to be our base coat for all of our green. Next step is going to be to start darkening up all of our shadows as well as putting some dirt into the crevices and by doing so we want to use Athonian Camo Shade. Now the reason we don't want to use something like Agrax Earthshade is that's going to be more on the brown spectrum and we're trying to aid in getting all of our greens into that same tonation that goes along with the Death Guard feel. So this is going to darken up our highlights and it's going to darken up our base tone a little bit and it's going to add a lot of shadow. Now you could go in with a edge highlight brush and kind of go into all the little nooks and crannies and add it manually and almost pinstripe the whole model. But in my case, I find it just easier and especially if you're going to be painting an entire army to just apply a nice even coat across the entire model. Now this becomes the point where we start to make the model our own and we go in and we add in a lot of our edge highlights on the green armor. Now keep in mind that there are going to be places that are going to be purple and other colors and just keep that in mind so that we don't accidentally go overboard with our edge highlights. However, we don't necessarily have to follow the highlights recommended to us by the color scheme given to us by GW we can go ahead and use other colors. In my case, I'm taking my original highlight tone that I sprayed from above, adding additional moot green to it, and using that as my edge highlight, and it creates a very subtle edge highlight. Now this is the way that I like to do things, and it doesn't have to be the way that you do things. This is your chance to go through and develop your own style and make your models your own, while still playing tribute to the original box art given to us by GW. We're already using that original Death World Forest green. We're keeping with the Death Guard green theme, but you can go in and make your highlights as bright or as dark as you want to at this stage and really start to make your army your own. Now as you can probably tell with a Space Marine, one of the tricks to making it look really nice is getting those crisp, clean edge highlights. The smaller you can get them, the better, but you don't want them to be so small that you can't see them from the table when playing with them. Now that also having been said, as you can tell, there is a lot of surfaces to do this on, and this is going to be one of the most time consuming steps. So if you're going to be doing this for an entire army versus a kill team, one of the things that I recommend is deciding which highlights are important, meaning which highlights are you going to see. Maybe the gasket around the neck, the edges of some shoulder pauldrons, if that be the case. Like in this case, you've got that little spike horn thing sticking out of one of the shoulder pauldrons. Do some highlights around it. Maybe a little bit of highlights on the arms, the tops of the knees, and then just stop there. Maybe put a little highlight on the shoes. Now in my case, I'm doing highlights all over. I'm going crazy with it because this is just the only model that I'm doing this with. But if I was going to be doing an entire army, I would not be highlighting every last little inch of this because that is just absurd and it is a massive waste of time if you're going to be doing 50, 60 plus models. Now some people like to do their metallics next as this next stage, but personally I like to go in and fill up what I refer to as all my soft spots or anything that I want to do black, especially with these space marines. And what I mean by soft spots is I mean any of the under armor, usually in the nook of the elbow, the back of the knee, sometimes around the feet, 
definitely in the hands a lot of the times you will have these soft spots in the armor that's anywhere where there's fabric or rubber or anything like that I like to go ahead and put in all my black right here and now and then I like to go and do all my metallics now when it comes to our metallics we can stay true to the box art which means lots of gold trim or even screaming bell when it comes to all of the bells and the bell iconography or we can switch it on its head and for all of the trim we can put silver now in my case I used a lot of gold because I wanted this to be very traditional and very box art but I've seen it done with silver and it works really really well and I think it looks really nice comparatively to most typical Death Guard armies. So if a lot of people at your local game store tend to play Death Guard, you may want to consider using silver as your color so that your army stands out on the table versus theirs. All the fleshy bits right now, I like to go in and do that with Zarius purple or any kind of dark purple colors. And then I like to highlight by mixing in Kakanopy purple. And uh, it's kind of like this monster hide like super bright pinky purple and you can kind of blend that on up through the range to get all of your nice highlights Bone. There's a lot on it when it comes to Death Guard, so we need to go ahead and start basing that. We need to decide if some of the skulls on the armor are skulls that are carved into the armor, or if they're actual skulls. Now in my case, I went with actual skulls because I think it adds a really nice pop of color. So how do we do this? Well, the way that I like to do it is I like to use Taller and Sand and a Shop de Bone as my base tones. And while I'm at it, I go ahead and take care of all those little nasty push tools that tend to be all over Death Guard models. It's a really great way to base tone them now and get the color on them. Next, we want to go ahead and ease our highlights on up by mixing into our Xandri Dust a little bit of Screaming Skull as a mid-tone. We use those on those nasty push tools as well, and then we leave that alone. And for the bone, we take it all the way up through Screaming Skull to be our brightest white. Now you can hit this with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade or even a little bit of non-oil if that's your thing and that'll add a bit more dirt and color back into the bone if you end up going just a little bit too bright. We're getting pretty close toward the end here so I was just going back through and finding any places where my base tones hadn't gone all the way through the way that I would have liked them. In this case my black was a little thin and I had actually missed a couple of spots so I went ahead and took care of that. Uh, basically you're going through right now and looking at all the little details and deciding hmm is that the color I really want this because once we start doing all of our weathering here in just a moment it'll be too late to go back so make sure that the model is where you want it and then let's get ready to start the weathering and just a quick side note because I know that I didn't really show it in the video the eyes in my model I end up painting red and I ended up basing that with actually an orange color and then adding the red on top which is why it pops so much uh, without it just being completely over the top now you could put a little bit of gloss coat on once you put your doll coat down just to kinda keep that red gloss and make it look like glass and here we have it before basing and before doing all of our weathering pigments. I just wanted to show it off so you guys could see what mine looked like. Hopefully yours looks something similar and hopefully we've had a lot of fun along the way. Let's go ahead and start with basing pigments. I promise it's going to be real fast. Now if you can't afford weathering pigments, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can actually make your own using chalk pastels and there's a video I've done about that on the channel. It's not a super great quality video, but it does get all the information across, so I will link that here. If you guys need me to remake that video and a little bit more of a professional standard, let me know, and I'll go back in and remake it. But the best way to use it is the exact same way that I like to use weathering pigments, and that's by mixing it with rubbing alcohol. And by mixing it with rubbing alcohol, we can apply it like a wash and just paint it onto our model. Now it is important to be aware of what types of metals rust in what ways, and to not put certain weathering pigments on certain metals so you can see I'm avoiding the gold I'm avoiding the brass but I am placing it on the surface of the model in places to kind of make it look as though it's starting to rust maybe the paint is kind of peeling back and that rust is starting to form and then I'm also going quite heavily in other places especially with the brown 
you can kind of be a little bit more liberal with the brown because the brown can also double up as mud and dirt so don't feel bad about getting that kind of all over the model but when it comes to the actual rust colors like your brick red and your bright orange just do your best to only place that where on your model it would be made of something like steel or iron and not put it just all over all of the metals. Something that I really enjoy doing on my Death Guard army bases, especially because they're kind of the bringer of plagues and things like that, I like to use a ghrelin earth and that kind of chips up and kind of makes the earth look dead and, and like it's starting to lose all of its moisture and that the earth itself is dying and so I like to leave that in the wake of the death guard so you'll see me apply it around the boots or across the whole back of most of the bases on death guard models that I paint and then I paint the front using other things like sterling mud and that sort of thing and once this dries you can come back in and either do another layer of it or you can apply washes or even put some of the Citadel contrast paints on top of it and darken it up to kind of get the front and the back of the base looking very similar while still having very different textures. And then Nurgle's Rot. So we can be a little bit more wishy-washy with how we apply this. We can kind of water it down a little bit and really spread it around. But I like to put it all in any kind of teeth or mouth, running out of any kind of open valves uh, across all of the pustules that we painted earlier but didn't put any color up on. Now if you don't have a Nurgle's Rot, you could use any kind of an orange colored wash on top of that, maybe a little yellowy and that'll kind of get you in the right direction but Nurgle's Rot really does a wonderful job at just kind of making things look wet and there you have it guys that's how I do Death Guard it's also how you could do Nurgle but in any case if that's really what you want to see let me know and I'll pick up some Nurgle models and we'll do a proper tutorial for them now I want to go ahead and take a second to talk about why the video is done in the way that it's done. I actually shot all of this footage while doing a live stream. It's why we have the overhead camera and it's also why we have a bit of reduction in quality. Now I just wanted to see if I could kill two birds with one stone and I think I kind of set out and proved my own point. So in the future if there's ever a situation in where I'm not able to record a normal video we may get another one like this again. But I am going to try to keep doing videos as I normally would do them. Uh, another thing, I know I didn't rim the base on this one. For some reason, I just like the way that the dirty bases look. When it comes to Nurgle, I think it kind of adds to the fact that they are what they are. So I don't tend to put any kind of decorative rim around the base. I didn't really talk about that in the video, but anyway, until next time guys, thank you guys so much for all the love and support. I really appreciate it, but this video has gone on long enough. So until next time, may your display case always be filled and your pile of shame never run empty. Until next time.